Hi there everyone, my name is Priyag Jirthani and today I'm going to make a video about the uncomfortable truth about residency and medical school. I am currently a first year resident at Stanford University's internal medicine program. I recently completed medical school at Yale, did an MD MBA, and I wanted to share this because it's something that I'm coming to terms with more and more as you get more and more into training, but the seeds of it were really planted in medical school. And the more we learn and talk about these truths, the more important it will be to communicate to others and the more uh, change is likely to happen. So let's get straight into it. And as you may see, just based on the way this PowerPoint slide is designed, it's actually about mental health. National Physician Suicide Awareness Day is actually September 17th. And national studies do indicate that suicidal ideation is common among physicians, way more common than you might think. And it's even more common than it might be for, uh, for work workers in other fields. One in 15 physicians in the U.S. have had thoughts of taking their own lives within just the last year. Perhaps what's even more concerning is because of the profession itself, physicians are not as encouraged to uh, openly talk about their problems, which often leads to propagations of symptoms and leads them to not being able to get, leads them to not get the help that they need. And for that reason, they are obviously at increased risk of the adverse effects of that. And the citation for these studies is going to be linked in the description below. But why don't I also just go ahead and show you that study, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. I'm taking the direct quotes from the study here, but I want you to know that they surveyed physicians, and uh, that's ultimately how they reached the conclusion the, in the aforementioned slides. And some of the quotes that are particularly interesting from this paper is that they provide an insight into the underlying basis for the mental health uh, struggles of this profession. And I think it's specifically a little bit more intense in residency because residents often work much more hours. Uh, and it can also put also be stressful in medical school because that's the first time a lot of students are getting exposed to the intensity of this profession. So let's just read some of these quotes to show you some of the insights that I gleaned. Despite their understanding of the biological basis for medical illness, physicians still fear they will be stigmatized for seeking care of mental health conditions. It's very paradoxical in that we all are aware that mental health affects all of our patients, and yet when it impacts someone in our field, we're, we struggle because we often feel like we will be stigmatized for saying we need help because we're supposed to be the ones who are helping others. Another quote from this paper, physicians' deep-seated altruism and desire to do good often leads to unrealistic expectations and a sense of guilt of not doing enough. This is something I felt a little bit more in residency, where there's always more you can do. You can work 26 hours a day, eight days a week, and it still feels like it's not enough because there's always tons of charting to do, tons of patient care to do. Patients usually come in with 10 to 20 problems and you can only address three. And it leads to this cognitive uh, dissonance of feeling like you want to help someone but also trying to find a balance between your own sanity and making sure you're looking out for what's best for like the patient at the end of the day, and also what's best for, you know, what's realistic, because you can't always address everything at once. These sentiments often lead physicians to sacrifice themselves, excessive work hours, constant worry that they may be missing something that would benefit their patients, and prioritizing work over personal health, which then leads to emotional distress and suffering. And again, I can tell you this happened to me a little bit in medical school, but I was able to juggle enough things to prioritize my own well-being. But it definitely happens a little bit more in residency. You work so hard that when you get home, all you want to do is pass out. And that often leads you to not spend time with people you love. It often leads you to not be able to do the things you love, like running or basketball or watching basketball. And that often creates a positive feedback loop that ultimately uh, leads to your ultimate mental health um, setback. And now here is the uh, figure from the paper. Feel free to look at it and also reference the paper, which will be linked below. But the thing I want to bring up here is another quote mentioned, the construct of low self-valuation is prevalent in medicine, and it's defined by the harsh internal response to personal shortcomings or perceived personal shortcomings and an associated propensity to defer self-care. When you're in residency, when you're in healthcare, even when you're a full-on doctor, nurse, um, NP, uh, PA, it's so easy to compare yourself to others. And because the profession is made up of such talented and incredible individuals, it's very easy to feel like you are not doing enough or that you're not as good as other people. And when you start doing these comparisons and leading uh, to these feelings of feeling like you're not good enough, that leads to increased, again, cognitive dissonance of saying, maybe I should be working more. And as you work more, that can lead to uh, worsening mental health. So that's just one paper. Let me show you another paper, and this is written by the Surgeon General. It's not a formal study. It's a perspective by Dr. Vivek Murthy, who is the Surgeon General currently of the United States. 
in, responsible for all sorts of impressive public health measures and actually from Yale and did an MDMB as well. But in this perspective piece, I just want to point out some of the things he mentioned. This paper was published in 2022, which means it's insanely recent. And it also goes to show that the fact that it was titled Confronting Health Worker Burnout and Wellbeing just goes to show how top of mind this is for everyone, including people who are, um, you know, in power and responsible for uh, making change. Some 52% of nurses, again, this is from the paper, say that they are planning to leave their profession. And then there's a shortage of more than 1 million nurses that's projected by the end of the year. This is going to create a massive gap in healthcare, and you can already tell that this partly is due to the increased stress that we've placed on the healthcare system during this pandemic, but it just goes to show how hard of a job it can be and just how much it takes to keep going into work every day. Another study found that in addition to spending one to two hours each night doing administrative work, outpatient physicians spend nearly two hours on the electronic health record and desk work for every one hour with patients. And the interesting part is if you look at the previous study, the, the, uh, the doctors that they surveyed were actually pretty old. They weren't just residents. And it tells you that this feeling of feeling overworked is present not just in residency, which it is because residents are working 80 hours a week. But even once you're in attending, you don't actually get to spend too much time with patients because there's so much charting, administrative work, as well as documentation that you need to do. And that's something that patients don't like, obviously, and also something doctors don't like, but we've just created a system where it's necessary and I can tell you for a fact, I personally feel like I am charting a lot more than I am spending time with patients. And unfortunately, it's kind of the name of the game. Um, here are the two other quotes. As, gratify as gratifying as our work is, it's okay. it can also be profoundly isolating. You know, the things that you see in the hospital, it's very tough. If I even describe one of those things, it can be tough for anyone else to understand just how griping and tough it can be because people go through some very, very tough times and people are very, very sick. And it's very tough to say, hey, I'm not okay. Because, again, you have that stigma, right? And even Vivek Murthy has had these feelings that not being able to let his colleagues know that he's suffering. He's talked about them before, uh, and he talks about them in these papers as well. And at the end of the day, change needs to start at the training level, including residency. Residency is insanely, insanely tough. I can tell you that for a fact. I love what I do, and I love my program. But I can tell you, it takes a lot out of me every day because I'm working just so hard. And sometimes all it takes is a little push to feel like it's not enough. So here's some thoughts that I think um, have been helpful for me as I've kind of navigated intern year, and I hope they help you as a medical student or even as a resident, uh, because it is a tough profession. I think positivity feels positivity. And sometimes I'm having a really tough day, and all it takes is one negative comment from someone to just spiral it down. And if that negative comment impacts me and I then pass it on by saying something shitty to someone else, I, that leads to negativity everywhere. So what I try to do is even if I am not feeling great, I still try to fuel positivity. So whenever a nurse helps me do something or whenever I get help from someone else, I'm always the first to say thank you. Thank you for your help with this patient. Thank you for helping me with this patient. Thank you for helping me because I didn't know this. And by fueling that positivity and acknowledging someone else's hard work, I think that then creates a positive on positive feedback vibe that I'm trying to propagate. And so if you're in healthcare, try to do the same. Say thank you. Uh, try to help uh, others. Try to get help and ask for help. And even if someone says something negative to you, please try not to pass it on. The other thing I try to do is focus on trying to see what I'm doing right instead of what I'm doing wrong. Uh, this is supposed to be a tough process. It's almost impossible to be perfect. And it's very easy to get caught up in thinking that I'm not good enough. But um, every day I try to say, okay, I'm a little bit better than I was yesterday. And that's all that matters. And even if I wasn't better than I was yesterday, um, maybe I'll try to be better tomorrow. That's kind of my general mindset. I also try to understand, even though no one else talks about it, um, at Stanford, there's a thing called duck syndrome, which is the fact that above the water, ducks seem like they're doing fine. But below the water, the ducks are furiously paddling because they just genuinely don't know what's going on. That's kind of what it feels like in residency. Everyone shows up to work. Everyone seems like they're doing great. But at the end of the day, everyone is still struggling. And I try to remind myself of that because sometimes it can, it feels like it's just me. And even if it is just me, it's good. It's, it's comforting to think that other people might feel it too. The last two are probably the most important. I'm slowly trying to learn being okay, not being perfect. And I also am trying to learn that comparing myself to others is a really easy way to be unhappy. And so if I learn something from someone else, or even if a med student knows way more than I do, I just try to take it in stride and say, hey, wow, this person knows some amazing stuff. I feel like I have a lot to learn from them. And I just try to learn. That's, that's all I can do, right? And at the end of the day, I make time for other hobbies, even though time is very limited. If I made medicine my entire life, 
if something went wrong in medicine, it would impact me insanely deeply. So what I try to do is I try to run, I try to spend time with my family, I try to spend time with my loved ones. And therefore, when I have a really crappy day, I have these other hobbies to fall back on and diversify how I'm feeling. And that really helps because if I'm having a shitty day at work, I just need to go on one rung and still remind myself, hey, I'm still a good runner or I still am able to enjoy running. I'm not a bad person. Um, and that really helps. So having these hobbies can be really helpful. I hate to end this video on such a negative note, but the reason why it's important is someone in our community did end up um, unfortunately taking their life. And I wanted to post this GoFundMe here because this is someone who was a resident and it's impossible to know what she was going through or even try to think I know what that feels like. But I do know that it was a really tough, it has been insanely tough. And I can only say that if we can all come together to at the very least um, help her family and also try to raise awareness of the, the fact that this is a problem, that would mean the world to me. Um, so thank you all again. I'm going to link the GoFundMe for this below. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Uh, like if you can, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.